All right, here we go with the practice exam for Excel chapter two. And as you can see, again, I've just got the exams isolated and click on training and projects. And I'm assuming that prior to taking this um, practice exam, you have um, already gone through the demo. And again, when you go through the demo, obviously work along with it with me so you get the best benefit from your learning. And this particular webcast is for those, uh, we, when you have a questions on a specific um, question in SAM, you're coming back and referring to this. There's, of course, the lady we call Denise or the study guide, which again is in the um, orientation to SAM way back at the beginning of the Google, Google Classroom assignments. But I'm going to dive in here to the SC Practice Excel Chapter 2 exam. And we'll go through these. And again, you can go, go through the exam first and then use this video as a resource for any questions you might have. And here we have 25 questions on this particular practice exam. And again, our goal here is to get 90% or to miss less than two. But again, I want to encourage you, whether it's pro projects or practice exams or whatever, always kind of be deliberate about finding areas that you're struggling with or not understanding, making sure that even if you miss something, you're going back and correcting and reviewing what should have happened the first time. All right, so here we go. Apply the integral theme to the current workbook. Okay, themes. All right. Okay, so here we go with themes. I'm going to go to page layout tab. Themes are over here on the left. I'm going to go find the integral integral theme. Change the entire look of my worksheet there. Okay. Question two, apply this percentage number format with no decimal places to range C4 through C15. So I'm going to get my white cross, come down here and drag down C4 through C15. And in my quick formats area up here in my number group, there's my percentage number format, which I'm just going to a click and apply percentage formats to that. Change the width of column D to exactly 25 characters. Now, I should be able to get my mouse pointer between D and E. Two different ways to do this. Right click on the column letter and select column width. Or let's see if I can drag, get my mouse pointer between D and E and drag out to where I'm at 25 right there. Let up, like so. All right. Again, there's always gonna be about two different ways, at least two different ways to do things. Use auto fit to adjust the width of column D so all cell content is visible, okay? And again, auto fit, we did this in Word if you took the Word course. Mouse pointer between D and E, and this is question four, by the way, double click. And that's auto fit, making the column a little bit wider than whatever's in that column. Change the fill color of cell E3 right here to orange accent 6, lighter 60%. Okay, that's going to be up here, my fill color. Question 5. And orange accent 6, lighter 60%. Right there. Column 10, row 3. All right. Question six, change the page orientation of the current worksheet to portrait. We could do this in our print settings area. We could also do this up here in page layout and orientation. And here we have landscape selected, which is sideways. And we're going to select portrait, which is down the page. That was question six. Question seven, enter a formula using arithmetic operators in parentheses in cell D11. Let's scroll down. Cell D11, I'd be down here. That adds the number of participants in cell D4, D5, D6, and D7. And then multiplies the result by 12. Okay. Now, again, we need to think about order of operations. We want to add up those numbers in those cells. Now, it says to add the numbers. I don't see where it's asking us to sum those. So I could be wrong here. So I'm going to say equal sign. And I want to have the addition actually happen first before the multiplication. 
So I'm going to hit a left parenthesis here. It says we want to do D4 plus D5. I'm just using the check, uh, the click on method here to select my cells. So I'm going to enter all four of those cells, close the parentheses. So again, we think about PEMDAS, the addition um, items will come first. Then we're going to multiply those by 12. And check mark. Okay. Okay, order of operations. Question 8. In cell D13, D13, create a formula using the max function to calculate the maximum value in D4 through D11. So I'm going to come up here to my auto sum in my editing group. I can also start, start typing in equals max here. Or I could use my function wizard here, insert function. Let me come up here to auto sum, drop down arrow, max. And it says, do you want to do the max between D4 and D12? No, I'm just going to use my white cross, left click and hold, and select over the top of that, and check mark to put my max function in there. Question 9, in cell D14. We're going to use the min function. Let's try a different method this time. Drop down arrow min. And here it's saying, uh, do you want to do the min of D13? No. I'm going to come up here and do D4 through D11 with my white cross. And again, whatever I select for a range overwrites what was up there previously. Check mark. Okay, question 10. Wrap the text in cell A4 so that all the text is visible in the cell. Okay, this is something we might not have covered. So we're not talking about changing the auto fit. <clears throat> we're talking about wrapping the text so if it doesn't fit, it's going to go down to maybe the next line. I'm going to go to my format tab and get this guy out of the way. <clears throat> format cells and I want to say alignment and I want to say wrap text which means if it runs out of room in the column given what I what I have for width it's going to shoot down that word hardware to a second line within the cell click OK and that's what auto fit looks like with wrap I shouldn't say auto fit wrap text sorry Question 11, <clears throat> for range B4 through B18, create a new conditional formatting rule that formats the top five cells in the range with an orange accent six cell background color. Okay, we're gonna select our range here, B4 through B18. <clears throat> Come up here to conditional formatting. Now it says the top five cells, okay? Now that should be a clue here. We're going to do top bottom rules. Drag this out of the way. Top bottom rules. And I'm going to do more rules. I'm going to say I want the top five. And you know what I think is going to happen? I think I'm already going to be off here. Because I wanted to do a, I need to sort by descending order first. So I'm probably going to, let's just hit cancel here. Okay. Let's sort those. It says the top five. Oh, I can just do conditional formatting. Sorry, I just lost it there for a second. I'm just doing conditional formatting. I don't know what I was thinking of. All right, let's just go back to where I was and say top five. And we're going to say format. We're going to use a, it says a background color, which is going to be fill of orange accent six. So if it is in the top five, It'll be highlighted in orange. And OK. There you go. OK, question 12. Apply a top and bottom double, excuse me, the top and double bottom border to range A12 through D12. So let's scroll down so I can see A12 through D12. Come up here to my borders. Top and double bottom border right there. It's like a, in old accounting paper, this is when you had a grand total. You had a line and then you had a double line. It's basically saying you're done adding. <clears throat> I 
had to be an accountant back in the 80s like I was. Apply the currency number format using the dollar symbol and showing two decimal places to the range B4 through B15. So when we say currency, we're talking about um, something that floats with the number rather than counting number format up here. I'm going to hit the drop down arrow and select currency. It automatically brings in two decimal places. Why you would want to have 0 .00 for all your numbers with two decimal places is beyond me, but whatever. Apply the month, day, year format shown there to cell C4. It'll be down here. Okay. I'm going to come up here to my drop down arrow. Actually, let's go to my number dialog box launcher. Date. I'm going to select that second date, which is the month spelled out, the day, and four-digit year. Again, March 14, 2012 is just a sample date we're using for formatting. <clears throat> All right, question 15, change the height of row 3 to 30 points. So I'm going to go over here and click on the row 3. Get my mouse pointer between three and four. Now again, I can right click here and say row height, or I can just get my crosshair between three and four and start dragging till I get to 30, like so. Okay, height of 30. Question 16, for values in the range B4 through B11, adjust the number of decimal places so that two decimal places are displayed. So I'm gonna select B4 through B11. Come over here to my number group. Here is your increased decimal. Click twice. So again, you have it to the cents. Now understand again that we didn't, those numbers weren't rounded. They were just formatted differently. They appear to be rounded, but they're not. They're just formatted to the nearest dollar. Highlight cells in the range D4 through D11 whose value is less than 20 with using light red fill, okay? So here we're talking about, again, conditional formatting, D4 through D11, conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, less than 20, now again, I typed something right over the top of it, using light red fill, Fill, drop down arrow, um, light red fill right there. Okay. And again, it's going to show you what that's going to look like when that's true. Click OK, and there that's applied. Conditional formatting is such an awesome tool because, again, it matches the formatting based on change. You know, the contents in your worksheet can change. Like if you're using it as a template from one week to the next, that's where conditional formatting is so powerful. Change the worksheet margins to the wide style. So go up here to page layout and margins. And we're going to do one inch margins here, which are wide margins. Gives us less room on our page. That was question 18. Question 19. Use flash fill to fill the range C4 through C20 after typing long KT, which is last name workshop, in cell C4, and Han in cell C5. Han in cell C5. I don't understand that, but maybe you do. Han in cell C5. And I guess they're saying Oh, I recognize a pattern. You're typing in the last name and then the workshop ID. So if I hit enter, it should apply that flash field, which it did to all the other cells. So it's, again, it's recognizing a pattern between two columns. Flash field, again, is unique to Office 2019. Use the fill handle to copy the formula in cell E4 to cells E5 through 11. So we're just taking this formula, which looks like C4 times D4 up here. All right. Crosshair, bottom right hand corner, E4, left click and hold, drag, not that far, weird, and come back, there you go, through E11. Okay. You do the heavy lifting with one cell and you copy it over a series of others. Add the text workshops to the center header section 
then click cell A4 to deselect the header. So here we need to go to page layout view down here. All right. And in the center header section, I'm going to type workshops. Then to record the header result, can I scroll down here? There we go. We're going to go back and click on, whoops, it already accepted that. That was different. All right, hide column C. Now, why would you hide something? Well, maybe you've got some sort of calculation or something that the person who's looking at your report doesn't need to see, okay? Or maybe you're um, printing out your final result and distributing it in, say, Adobe PDF version, all right? So in this case, I want to hide column C, so I'm just going right, to right click on the letter C and say hide to hide that column. That was question 22. On to question 23 in cell E10. Create a formula using the mouse to enter cell references that add cells B9 and B10 and then subtracts cell E8. Okay. Now here we have order of operations, but it's addition and subtraction, so not critical. I'm going to say equals, and it says use the mouse, so I'm going to say B9 plus B10 minus E8. I'm looking up here on my formula bar. Plus B9 plus B10 then subtracts E8. Looks good. Check mark. Again, because it was addition and subtraction, order of operations really wasn't critical there. Edit the conditional formatting rule for cells. And again, here's a clue. I need to highlight B4 through B17. Um, to highlight cells whose value is less than 50,000. Okay. Conditional formatting for those cells B4 through B17. Uh, manage rules. Okay. And there's our rule right there. And let's click on that rule and say we're editing an existing rule. And it looks like we meant to do less than 50,000, but we have greater than 50,000. We just need to change this operator, this wording here, drop down arrow, from greater than to less than. And it says we're applying the same formatting. Okay. So we should be good to go. It's the opposite of what we intended. And again, when you get into worksheets and you're looking at it and going, that is not what I meant to do. That's where really your, ex your expertise in Excel really comes into play. You can start making modifications on the fly and also recognize where you messed up. Okay, scaling. Here we go. Um, let's go to Page Layout tab. We're going to reduce our scaling, which means we're going to get more on the page to 85%. Here's my scaling at 100. What happens if I hit the drop-down arrow? 95, 90, 85. And I'm done with my scaling. We can also scale it so it's one-to-one. -one. That's the end of our practice exam for Chapter 2. And from here, you will go on and work on the project, SC Project, Excel Chapter 2, Lab 1. And thank you for watching.